measurements to make this skirt design you need to measure around your waist your hip and how wide you want each tear to sit as well as the length of the inner skirt or the lining so i'm going to be working with the following tools to make the patterns for the skirt i have my sketch already here i find doing this just makes making the pattern a lot clearer in my head i also have my tape measure my paper scissors pens my set square and pattern master my long metal ruler as well as pattern paper all items are going to be linked down below in the description box for anyone who wants to check them out so the fabric i'm going to be working with is this beautiful till i want to call it like a mix between silk and satin because one side is really soft and smooth and then on the wrong side of the fabric is matte and has some static i got three meters of that fabric to make this skirt i also have a skirt zip that is about 11 inches long white button matching thread as well as some inter facing that i'll be using to stiffen up my waistband this video is broken up into three sections. The first part, we're going to be making the inner skirt patterns. The second part, we're going to be cutting the skirt tears. And then for the third part, we're going to be putting the skirt all together. Starting out with the inner skirt patterns, I'm going to be drawing a long vertical line like so. And this is going to become my center front line. I'm also going to be marking the length of the skirt. I decided to work with 17 inches, which is slightly above my knee. So I'm going to be marking quarter of my waistline along this top edge like so. And mine is 7.25 inches and square across like so, so we have a waistline clear to work with. I'm going to be extending the edge of this waistline up by about half an inch, so it just sits a lot nicer along my waist when I have the skirt on. So I'm connecting that back to the horizontal line of the waistline, so we have that curved shape going on. For the skirt hem, just choose a length or a measurement that is at least wider than your hip line because you want to create an A-line skirt. I decided to work with about 33 centimeters or 13 inches and then I'm going to connect that back to my waistline. You don't want to make a straight shape because then the lining of the skirt will be tight around your hips and around your knees. But if you want a more detailed step-by-step -step guide, I have linked one down below for anyone who wants to make their own skirt patterns with darts and you can go and check that out as well so next up i went ahead to divide that a-line skirt into two halves because that midpoint is going to become a seam where the second tier of our skirt is going to sit so now that we have that plan all done i'm going to go ahead and create a waistband that extends upwards from the waistline of this my pattern so i'm working with a waistband that is two inches wide connected all of my points together join it down to the side of the side seam of the skirt just ensure that waistband is a width that will be comfortable around your belly or around your waist so i'm connecting it down to the side like so and i'm going to be adding notches along that waistline, along that mid sim point and the hem of this plan as well. Next up, you need to trace out all three skirt panels onto fresh pattern paper. So that's for your waistband, the top skirt, the bottom skirt. You add your seam allowance all the way around as well as your annotations, your grain line and your notches ready to cut onto fabric. So I have my waistband, my top skirt and my bottom skirt all trace out and ready to go and because of the shape of this skirt you can either use the same patterns to cut your front and your back or you can use the same plan to make your back patterns just add that center back seam allowance for your zip so once that is all done you can go ahead and cut onto fabric 
to save paper i'm going to be using the same patterns to cut my back pieces for my back pieces all i did was i added roughly two centimeters to the center back outwards using chalk so once i cut this out i know i have a zip allowance ready for me to work with for the waistband i added about 4.5 centimeters or two inches because of the size of my buttons but if you have like a skirt hook you can just add two centimeters and that would work well so i'm just going out here to cut out my back pieces like so cutting around the sides the bottom as well as our allowances too don't forget to cut your notches for all of like your waistband and your skirt pieces because this skirt actually has a lot of pieces that you have to join together. So I'm just cutting up this notch here like so before going ahead to cut the outer skirt or the tears that you actually see on this skirt design. So if you haven't seen my skirt tutorial, circle skirt tutorial already, I recommend you watch that because if you've seen that already, making the skirt would be a lot easier for you to do. But if you haven't, don't worry. I explain how I cut each tier for this skirt. So for the first tier, we're going to be cutting a circle skirt with a radius of five. If you work with this formula here, applying your waistline as the circumference, finding your radius and then folding the fabric twice. So you have two folded edges and with that radius, you mark across this circular shape. So when you cut that waistline open, you have a full circle that you can join to the waist of your skirt but because we want a center back seam i am pulling this edge of the fabric away like so so we have one edge slightly outwards like this and that we're going to cut open and it will become our center back seam for our zip so once all of those lines are clearly marked and joined together with chalk and your ruler you can go ahead and mark the skirt length from that waistline seam downwards so I'm just going in here to add my seam allowance for my zip on this edge of the circle skirt because if we don't create that opening there, we won't be able to fix a zip on the center back of the skirt because this is the first tier that goes into the waistband of the skirt. So I'm just going ahead to cut open this edge like so. So we have our first tier of the skirt done. So making the second and the third is relatively the same step. You measure that line, the midpoint line, multiply it by four, and that's going to become the second friends that you apply into this formula to find the radius that you use to mark across that edge of the fabric to make a circle skirt. So these are sort of like making mini circle skirts. Instead of just making a long one, you make three mini circle skirts, join them together to make this tiered skirt design. I just want to say that when you're marking along this radius like so it's either you mark with your derived radius point and then you add a seam allowance above that or you just take away half an inch from that measurement before marking it across so once you've marked the waistline you go ahead and mark the length of the skirt from that waist seam point or the top edge point you join your dots all together and then you cut it out to have your full circle which is going to become the second tier of this skirt so cutting the third one is the same you measure that bottom line multiply it by four and that's going to become the circumference that you apply into the formula to find the radius that you use to cut your third mini skirt or your third tier so i'm going to be marking across on 7.5 inches so we have half an inch seam allowance like so mark all the way across to have that top or inner circle all done you connect your dash your dashes together with your pattern master or by hand and then from that point you mark downwards your skirt length so because i wanted the tiers to be the same length i am working with 27 centimeters or 10.5 inches you can decide to have one tier be sort of get bigger as it grows downwards but because i wanted sort of the same width for each tier i'm working with the same measurement like so so i'm just going ahead to cut out my tier three or my mini circle skirt number three with a fabric scissors i'm cutting along the bottom hem i'm going to go ahead and cut along the waistline in quotes or the top edge of the circle so we have all the pieces of our skirt cut and ready to go 
So once you have all of your circle skirt pieces cut, I went ahead to cut out my back pieces as well and also my waistbands which I have already fused with some interfacing on the wrong side of the fabric and I've cut two pairs so I'm able to make a waistband that has a clean finished seam on the top edge. So the fusing just makes the waistband a whole lot stiffer and it sits a lot nicer on your waist. So now that I have all of our pieces ready to go, it's time to put them all together. So I like to work my way from the bottom up. It just makes it easier for me to organize the pieces. So I'm starting with the widest or with the base tier. So this is the inner skirt. I'm going to go ahead and join the side seam and the center back seam on my sewing machine. I'm sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance because that's how much seam allowance I added on my pattern. I'm going to do this for the side seam, the center back, and then just overlock everything. So I'm going to grab the widest circle skirt or the bottom tier and I'm going to be joining it to the hemline of my inner skirt like so. So I'm going to pin it all up together and then I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew them together on a one centimeter seam allowance. After sewing that up using a normal straight stitch, I'm going to go ahead and overlock that seam. So we have that first tier of the skirt done, ready to be joined to the second and then to the first and then to the waistband. So it's just like building a Lego house, but you start from the foundation and you work your way up. So I'm just going ahead to finish off this seam on my overlocker so it's nice and tidy. I went ahead to give this piece a press to relax all of my seams and I'm going to grab my tier number two and I'm going to be joining it to the top edge of this last inner skirt. So for this piece, you don't need to do like a one centimeter or a wide seam stitch. You just need to do like a basting stitch just to hold it in place, ready to be joined to the inner skirt of the first layer. So after that, I'm going to go ahead and fold and sew the hems of both layers. So the widest one at the bottom and then the second one or the middle one. And because we're working with circle skirts, this actually took me a good while to make. But just doing it nice and slowly ensures that you have a good outcome. So I went ahead to also iron down both seams so we have everything relaxed and tidy. And I'm going to go ahead and work on my waistband next. So I'm going to pin the side seams of my front and back waistbands together. You should have two sets. So when you join them up, you have a nice finished seam on the top edge of your waistband. So once I'm done sewing up that side seam, I'm going to pin them right sides together. And we're going to be sewing from the bottom edge up the side across the top and down to the bottom edge. The bottom edge I'm sewing in is the width of my button, which is about two inches or 4.5 centimeters. So I'm cutting up this edge like so, trimming down the corners, and I'm going to turn this inside out, give it a nice press. So we have a clean, beautifully finished waistband ready to be joined to the waistline of your first layer of the skirt. So this is what the waistband should look like. And because I wanted to overlap because of my buttons, that is why you have that nicely finished edge on the bottom of the waistband. Now I'm going to work on the last layer, which is the topmost layer. I'm going to be joining the side seam of the inner skirt first. So I'm just sewing this on a one centimeter seam allowance, and then I'm going to overlock both seams so they are ready to be connected to the circle skirt or the first tier. So this is our first circle skirt and this is where the zip is going to sit. I have marked where I want my zip to end. It's about two inches or three inches above the hem. And I'm going to sew from the hem up until the point where I want my zip to stop. And then I'm going to pin my zip into the open side of that center back seam. So this is the reason why having that center back seam was important because that's where your zip is going to sit. So using my zip footer, which is a narrower footer than the normal one I used to sew, I'm going to be sewing my zip into the center back seam of my first tier or my first layer skirt. So I'm just finishing up the side of my zip like so. I'm working my way to the top, not forgetting to do my back stitch at the end. And using that inner skirt, we're going to conceal the edge of the zip 
taking this side i'm going to be pinning it to this edge that has the zip i'm going to match the other side to the other end of the zip so when you stitch up this seam here and on the other side it hides the zip edge and that center back seam allowance in that seam so I'm using a narrow foot to sew this up because of the zip teeth that is there. It's, it was a bit difficult to do with my normal sort of footer. So when you are all done with that, I left about two inches open from the bottom up and I'm going to be sewing that close so that finishes off the seam of the inner skirt. Next up, we're going to be joining the waistband to the waistline of this skirt piece here. I went ahead to sort of stitch both layers together on like a 0.5 seam allowance. So they are like one piece ready to be joined to the waistline of the skirt. So taking the waistband, I'm going to be joining it first to this inner side of the skirt, which puts the waistband on the inside of the skirt. And I'm going to be sewing it all around on a one centimeter seam allowance from beginning to end sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance i'm working that waistband into the waistline of the skirt so this skirt piece is ready to be joined to the rest of the other tiers so this is what the wrong side of the skirt looks like and it just looks just as good so next up i'm going to be folding the edge of the waistband on the outside or the side that you can actually see i'm folding it in by one centimeter and i'm just pinning it down i'm pinning it down because i want to do a top stitch that joins the waistband to the waistline of the skirt and once the pins are there it just means i have to sew take out a pin and continue sewing now now, sewing this stitch is a bit tricky because it's a very delicate edge stitch of about 0.2 to 0.3 inches so i just took my time doing this and i wanted the stitch to be uniform from the beginning to the end because this is the part of the garment that you would actually see when you have it on so once that is done i'm going to be joining that top skirt to the rest of the other pieces so i'm going to be joining the inner skirt to the top edge of that second tier so I'm just going to pin them together and take this to my machine and sew it up on a one centimeter seam allowance using a normal straight stitch so because we've already fixed our waistband we fixed our zip once you sort of stitch this seam up you have your whole skirt piece already done so I'm working my way all around till I get to the end of this seam and then I'm going to go ahead and overlock it to just finish off those seams nice and neatly even on the inside of the garment so once i'm done overlocking this i'm going to go ahead and work on the buttonhole and fixing the buttons to finish up this skirt Because of the width of my button, I just worked with the widest allowance that my button hole footer actually has. I marked it on one side and then on the other side, I marked where I wanted my button to sit. Just go ahead and measure all of this up so they actually correspond in a way that looks good. Thankfully, my machine comes with the buttonhole stitches on this side like so. I'm going to use that to fix the buttonhole stitch into the waistband of the skirt. So I'm just going ahead to stitch this up like so. I have a tutorial on my channel that actually show like a step-by-step -step guide on what stitch to use, how to fix the footer and how to like adjust it for different button sizes. So I'm going to link that somewhere on the screen and down below so you can check that out as well if you haven't seen it already. So once that is done, I'm just going to finish up this buttonhole stitch like so. And I'm using a very tiny scissors to cut the middle point of that stitch open. So I have it revealed to pass my button through when I wear the skirt. So once I finish up that stitch, I always like to check that the button actually passes through before I sort of finish off. So the last thing you will need to do is to sew the button into place. If you're working with a button, if you're working with a skirt hook or a popper, that's what you need to do to finish up your skirt design. So this is what the finished skirt looks like. It fits really nicely on. It's very comfortable. It's something I know I would wear a lot for the summer when we're actually allowed to go outside and have normal lives. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. 
If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Share your thoughts down below. And until my next video, please stay safe. Please stay positive. And I will see you next time. Bye.